guys. God bless you all. God bless you all. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with all of his glory. Oh, Lord God. Lord God, we have made it to Revelation 19, which talks about your return, our returning bridegroom, our returning groom, our long-awaited king. It also talks about the marriage of the Lamb. Lord God, thank you for the invitation that you give to each one of us. I know that not all of us will accept that invitation, but you give it to us all. So thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus, for being such a great husband to us. I know that the, that term may be kind of foreign to some, but that's what the Bible says. It calls you our maker, our husband, our groom, and the church is your bride. What an honor to be considered the bride of Jesus Christ. So, Lord God, as we go through this time of reading your word, as we go through the, the last couple remaining, the last few remaining chapters of Revelation, I pray that you will open our spiritual eyes and our hearts to, to see this as more than just black words on a page. I pray that we can see this as just more than a story in a Bible, because this is not, like most of the stories of the Bible, this is not a past event. This is a future event that is soon to take place. No one knows when but the Father but we know that it is coming soon and you tell us to be ready. So may we be ready. May we be like the ten or the five virgins who had their oil in their lamps. Well, may we not be like the unprepared ones. You say, don't be caught sleeping when the master returns. Lord, we are ready for you. We will wait for you as long as we have to. You waited for us. You waited for us in our sin and in our shame in our darkness that we were walking in, Lord, we all have a past, and you waited for us, so we will wait for you. We love you, Lord. We love you. Please speak to us. Give us supernatural understanding of your word. Remove all distractions in both the physical and the spiritual realm. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Okay. So I'm just going to give a little summary. So to, up to this point in Revelation, the earth has been subject to a series of judgments by God. That's what we've been talking about a lot in Revelation. Um, these were first described as seal judgments, Revelation 5 through 8. And then through the trumpet judgments, which is Revelation 8 through 11. And then finally we get to the bowl judgments, which is Revelation 12 through 16. And then the last two chapters, um, they give a poetic description of the fall of Babylon. Both as a corrupt religious system and as a political empire of the Antichrist, Revelation 17 through 18. So here, John witnesses prayers from heaven, which precede a great celebration, followed by the triumphant return of Jesus Christ to the earth. Jesus coming here to earth. So that is what we are fixing to get into as we read Revelation 19 um, and on. So we're going to be reading about the marriage supper, the marriage of the Lamb. And this is an event that is mentioned many, many, many times in Scripture. Um, a few places it is mentioned is Matthew 22, verses 1 through 14, Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. Um, so John's amazing vision, it is... Um, it includes the long-awaited second coming of Jesus Christ, the moment of incredible triumph. Uh, Jesus' first arrival on earth was humble. You know, he came as a humble servant, Luke 2.7, and it involved his sacrificial death on the cross, Philippians 2.8. But his return, when Jesus returns back to this earth, it will be neither humble nor meek. Christ is described as a royal conqueror, wearing a robe dipped in blood, the blood of his enemies to be exact, and um, then the helm of armies of heaven behind him. He, now he is displayed as the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and G Jesus will single-handedly liberate the earthly armies which have amassed against him, Isaiah 63.3. The res this results in the damnation of the Antichrist and the false prophet who become the first two beings cast into, into the eternal lake of fire. We will also hear about that in Revelation 19, starting in verse 11. So I'm going to quit talking right now, and we're just going to hop right in. 
Oh, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy are you, Lord. So like I said in the prayer, guys, as we read this, I don't want you to just think of it as um, a part of the history of the Bible. This is not history. This is prophecy. This is not history. This is not prophecy that has been fulfilled yet either. This is prophecy that is still to be fulfilled. And we know that if God has spoken it, it will be performed because we know that he is not a man that he shall lie. He is not a man that he shall lie. And if he spoke it, it will happen. We will see this prophecy fulfilled either in our life, our children's life, our grandchildren's life. I personally believe it will be in our lifetime, but I know that no one but the Father knows at the time. But either way, we should be prepared. We should be reading up and studying up on what is to take place. We should be doing things like reading Revelation and other parts of the Bible that tells us the signs to look for for the end times. Because if we are just filled with worldly knowledge, what good is that going to do us when our King comes? He's, he's not going to care about all the worldly knowledge that we've gotten, all of the um, college degrees we've gotten. I mean, all of that's good stuff. I'm not saying don't go to college, so Lord, please don't misquote me. But we need to be reading gifts. We need to be filling ourselves with gifts. Because King Jesus is coming back, and many are going to be caught off guard. Many who think they are not, or many who think they are ready, are going to see that they were not ready. I'm going to say that again. Many Christians who think they are ready for Jesus' return, We'll find out when he gets here that they were not ready. He says, be holy for I am holy. All right, let me hop right in. So, Revelation 19. All right. After this, John said, I heard something like the loud voice of the vast multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation, glory, and power belong to our God because his judgments are true and righteous. Another translation says his judgments are valid because he has judged the notorious prostitute who corrupted the earth with her sexual immorality and he has avenged the blood of his slaves that was on his hands. A second time the voices said, Hallelujah, her smoke ascends forever and ever. Then the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God, who was seated on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. Verse 5, a voice came from the throne, saying, Praise our God, all his slaves, who fear him, both small and great. Then I heard something like the voice of a vast multitude, like the sound of cascading waters, and like the rumbling of loud thunder, saying, Hallelujah, because our Lord God, the Almighty, has begun to reign. Let us be glad, rejoice, and give Him glory, because the marriage of the Lamb has come, and His wife, which is the church, His true church, and his wife has prepared herself. And she was given fine linen to wear, bright and pure. For the fine linen represents the righteous acts of the saints. And he said to me, Right, those invited to the marriage feast of the Lamb are fortunate. He also said to me, These words of God are true. Then I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, Do not do that. I am a fellow slave with you and your brothers who have the testimony about Jesus. Worship God. Worship God. Because the testimony about Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Um, I just want to point out, we should never be worshiping angelic beings. We should never be worshiping angels. And there are people who actually do that. They put more time and focus into learning about angels, which there's nothing wrong with learning about angels. I've studied them also. But we are only to worship God. We are only to exalt God. He's the only one worthy. The only one that will ever be worthy. So verse 11 and then I saw heaven opened. Y'all close your eyes if you would and just try to imagine this. Then I saw heaven opened and there was a white horse and its rider is called Faithful and True. And he judges and makes war in righteousness. 
His eyes were like fiery flames, and he had many crowns on his head. He had a name written that no one knows except himself. He wore a robe stained with the blood, or the blood of his enemies, and his name is the Word of God. Who's, who do we know is the Word of God? Jesus. Jesus is the Word of God. Jesus is God made manifest. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Jesus is our Lord. Jesus is our King. Jesus is the name that one day every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that He alone is Lord of Lords, that He alone is King of Kings. Those who mock Him, those who mock Him will even one day, it says that their knee will bow and their tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every knee, every tongue, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. You are worthy, you are worthy, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. Verse 14, the armies that were in heaven followed him on the white horse wearing pure white linen, a sharp sword, came from his mouth. My other Bible says a sharp double-edged sword came from his mouth so that he might strike the nations with it. He will shepherd them with an iron scepter or my, the other translation says he will rule them with an iron scepter. He will also trample the winepress of the fierce anger of God the Almighty and he has a name written on his robe and on his thigh. King of kings and Lord of lords. Verse 17. Then I saw an angel standing on the sun. And he cried out in a loud voice, saying to all the birds flying high overhead, Come, gather together for the great supper of God, so that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of commanders, the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses and of their riders, and the flesh of everyone, both free and slave, small and great. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to wage war against the rider on the horse and against his heavenly army. But the beast was taken prisoner, and along with him the false prophet, who had performed the signs in his presence. Do y'all remember um, the beast and the false prophet that we were talking about before, um, that was performing the false signs and wonders? Um, the witnesses that were killed in the streets. Do y'all y'all remember all that? If not, either get your Bible out and go back, or you can go back and watch my old videos again. Um, let's see. So uh, the false prophet who had performed the signs in his presence, it says that false prophet, he deceived those who accepted the mark of the beast and those who worshipped him with these signs. Those who worshipped his image with these signs, both of them were thrown alive, alive. They were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. The rest were killed with the sword that came from the mouth of the rider on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. So we're going to stop there. You definitely want to check back uh, tomorrow. We're going to be talking about Satan being down um, and the saints reigning with the Messiah. Uh, so where I know at the beginning of that it started out really good and at the end it's talking about the birds of the sky eating the flesh of the kings. If you are truly Jesus' bride, if you have truly put your faith in him and have submitted your life to him, if you truly belong to Jesus, if the spirit of Jesus Christ lives inside of you, then you are marked, you are sealed, and your flesh will not be devoured by these birds. You, you will not be destroyed by Jesus. He's not coming back to do away with you. He's coming back to do away with darkness and to do away with sin and to do away with every stumbling block and hindrance that has hindered his saints, that has hindered his bride. He is coming back to truly set the captives free. He is coming back to bring true liberty. He already reigns victorious, but when he comes back to earth, it is going to then be um, visible in the natural realm. It is then going to be manifested for our natural eyes to see. Jesus loves you so much, and I cannot wait for him to come back. I cannot wait to be in heaven with you.
even the ones of you who are going to watch this one day that I, I, I will never meet here on earth. I know that I will meet you in heaven, and oh, what a glorious day that will be. There will be no more sickness, no more pain, no more death, no more hardships, no more trials. There will be no more separation from God. We will see him face to face the way that you see my face right now, how clearly you see my face. That's how you will see God, but it'll be in person, not through a computer screen or a phone screen. We will be able to touch him. Touch your arm right now. Just touch your arm. Do you feel how you can feel your arm? You're going to be able to feel Jesus like that. We're going to be able to hug him. We're going to be able to worship him and us see the joy on his face. How much it blesses his heart when we worship him. There won't be anything separating us anymore. I know when Jesus died, the, the veil of the temple to enter into the Holy of Holies where only the high priest could go. The, Jesus tore the veil in two from top to bottom, not from side to side to show that no human hands could have done that. It was tore from top to bottom so we can now all press in and enter into the Holy of Holies. We don't all do that though. Not all Christians have entered into the Holy of Holies. Some haven't quite figured out how or they don't have the patience because sometimes you've got to wait just a little bit on the Lord. But let me tell you, in heaven, we're going to be able to step into the Holy of Holies and remain there. And we'll, we'll be in this deeper level of intimacy with God that our minds can't even fathom right now. It'll be true oneness, true communion between us and the Father forever, for eternity. It'll never end. There won't be a day you wake up and he won't be there. God is so good. I could keep going on and on and on and on talking about heaven and talking about how good God is. But I've already ran pretty long, so I'm going to let you guys go. I love you. God bless you. Jesus is coming back soon. Be ready. Be watchful. And be filling up on your word. You cannot know Jesus if you do not know the word of God. Oh, I just heard God also say, though, there are many people who know my word front to back and can quote almost every word of it but they don't know me personally they're modern day pharisees and they do not have a relationship with me jesus says i would love to set you free from that today all it takes is repentance and surrender so whoever that was for god's grace is abounding god's grace is mercy or god's mercy is new every day he loves you and he wants more for you than to just know his word he wants you to know his heart he wants you to know his heart. God bless you all.